Uh, thank you, Renee. Uh, first of all, Brad stole my thunder. I got this phone call a few weeks ago. This guy's talking to me. I don't know his name is. I didn't catch it. He listed off all these famous hockey people. He said, what are you calling me for? And it keeps going on and on. I find it. Geez, that sounds great, but what are you calling me for? He said, oh, I forgot to tell you, you're in Duck Bee, too. So thank you very much. Uh, yes, I grew up in Pasadena. It was a college town in northern New York. Uh, when I was growing up, we were a dominant team in the state for about 15 years. There's a picture of my high school team senior year. 16, 16 of the 18 skaters played college hockey. That's an education of both our the hockey level and the education level of Pasadena. And I had a mediocre career at Clarkson. Played senior hockey for several years, went to grad school, got a PhD, a couple masters, thought I'd go into college teaching. But I, I helped coach a high school team their very first year at Christian Brothers Academy Syracuse. And I saw in Hockey News you could apply to Concordia University for this program in Moscow, coaching uh, program. So I went. And I still remember crossing into Canada, South and Island Bridge. Very excited. I'm going to go to Europe for the first time. I'm going to go to Russia. I'm going to learn something about hockey. I didn't know. Say to myself, you know, as I drive to Montreal, this could change my life. Now, I didn't really think it would, but it's sort of like a novel. Yeah, it did change my life. A few months after I came back, I met John Ferguson. He was the new general manager in the New York Rangers. He got me a coaching job. So I said to him, yeah, but what's the job? He said, you're going to run a training camp for us. So when I left for training camp that fall, I didn't know if it was going to be running training camp or picking up pucks. I ran a training camp. I was the only coach without the ice. I put the lineup together for exhibition games. And let me tell you, that's the biggest jump from a low-level high school team to New York Rangers. And I loved it. I really did. I found out very quickly the good guys in this drama were the players. Not necessarily the coaches, not the general managers, the players. And after that were the fans. The players loved the game, they played it, the fans loved to watch it and they supported it. So after uh, I did find out the downside is you get fired, it came to John got fired, we all got fired. Eventually I ended up in Winnipeg. I was there for 14 years. I had like every job, scout, Marley coach, system coach, head coach. System GM, GM. I began to ruffle a few feathers when I became GM because I had a radical thought that he didn't have to be Canadian to play in the National Hockey League. When I went to work for the Rangers, I realized pretty quickly two things. At first, I was the only American working in the National Hockey League, no other Americans. Matter of fact, they put me in immigration media, uh, uh, immigration migrant, whatever you call that for a work visa, thinking I was Canadian. And the other thing I realized that closed aside, it was only for Canadians. No Americans, nobody else. The odd college guy played, he's too good, Ken Dry, Tony Esposito. And uh, over time, that door broke down. I think it was part of it. There's several people here who also part of it. Uh, Lou Vero is a big part of it. Lou Lamarell is a big part of it. Craig Patrick, who's all Americans, had a big, big role. No man had a bigger role than 80 Olympic team. After they beat the Russians, they shattered that door with a sledgehammer. After that, nobody could say American college kids couldn't play. So after Winnipeg, I ended up in Toronto. Uh, went to second year there, went to the final four. Absolutely loved Toronto. World-class city, Canadian. Not American, Canadian city. The good qualities of Canadian city. After that, I went to, went to Chicago. I was there for four years. Another great city. So I, I ended up managing two original six teams. I coached in a uh, original six teams. And I know the Islander people and the Saber people who want to hear this, but there is such a thing as original six team, and then the rest. <laughs> and believe me, if you, I had told you this before I went to work for the Rangers, I would be a it. There's something about the, the history of the original six teams. But some of the things I did, when I got done coaching, there are no coaching books in any language. Nobody write them, nobody buy them, nobody sell them, nobody print them. So I began to self-publish coaching books. 13 books later, 350,000 sales. 
they've, been, they've made a real contribution to the coaching field. The other thing I did as a manager, I still remember this after being on a pregame radio show, broke the elevator, press box, there's a couple there, and I could see her praying to God her husband being called an asshole. Because he ain't been listening. I could tell he'd been listening to the radio show. But there I realized the fans should be able to talk to the coach and the general manager directly, not get the propaganda from the team or from the media people. So we always, I always had, I always had uh, town meetings, like a New England town meeting, where everybody comes, everybody's equal, stop for season two, it's for everybody. And the first year, this TV guy came, he followed me over to the event, he said, you're not going to throw tomatoes at you. You're not going to throw tomatoes at you. You might throw tomatoes at me if they still see me on the street alone, but they're not going to stand up in front of 1,500 people, call me a jerk, and throw a tomato at me. And it worked out very well. Uh, quite proud, I think today was still the only Copy executive really had the open town meeting. So when I got done with um, managing, not, not by choice, but <laughs> so be it, <laughs> uh, I took up analytics. And for the hockey people in NHL, you're not surprised that nobody wanted to do analytics. But I read the, the Moneyball book and it made a lot of sense to me. And really want to figure out how we can do analytics. And it was hard to get clients. You got clients. But after the first 10 years, eight of Stan's Cup winning teams used my analytics. And it really was a management tool. Good management people look for new tools. Numbers don't lie. That's why I think managers don't want to do it, because it points out the mistakes you made. So I did that up to about two years ago. And my wife, Phoebe's here. Two steps forward. Phoebe decided I should become a farmer. So I became a farmer. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I guess if you look at some of these pictures up here, it, one of the things I did, I'm very proud of, I've made maple syrup. Good quality maple syrup. And well known in our area. And let me know, let me tell you, you have to like the work if you want to do maple syrup. You just don't. If one, a lot of people say, now how do you do it? You tap the tree and the maple syrup comes out? Yeah, you tap the tree and the maple syrup comes out. That's why everybody has syrup and maple because they don't own, own, own uh, maple syrup. But, you know, it's a good exercise for me because you think, well, who am I going to thank? Of course, I'm going to thank my parents. I'm going to thank my late wife, Judy, Eden. I'm going to thank my grandparents who gave me my first pair of hockey clubs. But I started writing a list of I got the 76 people <laughs> who helped me, encouraged me, hired me, said don't listen to the critics. That's a lot of people. You know, and I always thought there were a lot of people before my life, but I could never put a number on it. And I started writing these names down. Ron Crone, one of them, one of the best people I've ever met. I think he liked baseball in New York Yankees better than my talk. He is in hockey though. But it was a really good exercise to realize uh, how many people I was dependent on over the years and kind of didn't really forget about it, but yeah, that's the way it is. So I think probably a lot of us can go through our life history and put together that list. And so I'm very grateful. And I'm very grateful I got to see all of Canada, almost all of the United States, all of Europe. I actually got paid to go to watch hockey games. Not well, because they didn't want to pay you much, but you know, sometimes I'd be sitting at a, a game someplace and saying, you know, we're getting paid for this. And, and you know, most people bought tickets. And so, hockey was a great sport, and now it belongs to the world. And we're very dependent on what Canada contributed. And they, it, the hockey is still a rural type sport with basic number of people. And that's what, one of the things that we're responsible, we need to thank Canada for. So, Renee, I hope 110 minutes. You're doing good. Thank you very much. <laughs>